Now, why should this be the case? And here's the big idea, right? <laughs> okay, so firstly, there's just the calculus reason. It's like, well, that's just what the numbers tell me, okay? But conceptually, more importantly, you remember I pointed out to you that this is a rectangle? It's not a coincidence, okay? What are, like, you know numerically what the values of each of those are, but what's the meaning of each of those numbers? Like, for example, this one, what does it actually signify? It signifies a duration, the time that we're interested in. A total hour, right? Time. Uh, I should say total time. What about the vertical distance? The number is 10, but what does it signify? It's the velocity. In this case, because it's a distance, I'm actually calculating not velocity, but speed, right? Because I'm, it's, just a, it's just a magnitude, right? Okay? Wait a second. Wait a second. You just worked out Time times speed. Time times speed? Speed times time? What is speed times time? It's just distance, right? Now, in this case, you've got a simple example. A rectangle. That's why you can just do this neatly, okay? But when you come back to this step, mm -hmm. this is no longer a rectangle, but what's the point of integration? Why is it called integration? Because you are putting together, adding up a whole bunch of what again? A whole bunch of infinitesimally thin rectangles, every single one of which is a little bit of time times a little bit of speed, and another little bit of time, and another, until whatever you get is this total area. And it can have a weird, wacky shape. This is convenient, actually. It's just a trapezium. What would it look like on this one, right? What total displacement does it represent? You've got a start point, right? This is the first hour, minute, whatever. You've got an end point there. What does this area represent on here? Well, you need that point up there and a vertical distance, right? Come on, help me out. This is a trapezium. We know the trapezoidal rule, right? Um, the area of a trapezium is height onto a plus b. What is it in this case? Can you tell me? It's one and a half. It's a half. That's the one. Times what? It's, it's my parallel sides, right? Now just be careful. The scales are actually different here. So I've got a two, four, six. Whereas one, two, three, so gotcha. Um, so my parallel sides are two and four. That's three, right? Three, four, five, six. Three units, right? So this idea that area equals total change, right, has to make sense because what you're doing, let's put it away one more time, oh. what you're doing is just an infinite series of speed times time, speed times time, speed, just little, little instance of it, and that's why you get total distance, right? You're summing, you're summing the entire bunch of distances that are traveled between time one and time two, or time this and time that. Does that make sense? So in much the same way that you, when you had a look at exponential growth and decay, um, you would get a differential equation, right? And then you'd say, okay, well, what if I know the change in population at a given time, okay? And it might be, say, 500 e to the 0 0.1 t, something like that, okay? How would you go from this, which is a derivative, to the actual population, what would you do? You're going to integrate, you're going to integrate. So I'm going to say p equals the integral of da 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 da, right? Then you're going to get out a function, some function of time, plus a constant. Yes? Why do you get this constant? How can Forrest Gump tell us why you get that constant? Because you can start, he didn't have to start 24 years away from home. I just made this number up, right? He could have started from home. He could have started thousands of kilometers from home. He's still doing the same thing relative to his starting point, right? So what this represents is you can start anywhere you like. Total displacement, remember the difference between distance and displacement, is just comparing um, your position relative to starting point. Does that make sense? So he doesn't care where you begin. He's just looking at, well, what's the difference? Yeah, makes sense. And like I mentioned before, uh, in the context of a population, you'd need a particular population at a particular time. What would you need to work out the actual displacement, not just relative to where you are? You just need some position and some time. Usually the initial condition, you know, when time equals zero, 
Forrest Gump is 20 kilometers away from home or whatever, okay? Once you've got that, you're gonna substitute those values into here, evaluate it constant out, in this case it would have been 20, and then off you go, you've got your displacement function. Does that make sense? But isn't it like, because displacement can be zero, right? If you like go back to where you start, so then, but on the graph, I'm so glad you asked. So, displacement can be zero, right? What does that look like here? What would that look like? Let's, um, let's change some things here, okay? Um, I don't need that um, tangent either. A displacement of zero, a displacement of zero, okay? Let's just for the sake of um, illustration, let's consider negative time as, as if it made sense, okay? So, where would be a couple of points in time that from the beginning to the end, I end up with displacement zero. Can someone give me an example? Any values you like. How about, okay, go ahead and pick a value that's not on there, okay? My, my axis only goes up to negative one over this side, so how about I just divide Aaron's numbers by three, because he's hard to deal with. <laughs> there's negative one, there's a starting point. If I compare that now with time one, I've gone all the way down to here, and then I've come up and I've ended here, right? So there's total displacement zero. I've ended back where I started. What does that mean for the velocity function? What area do you get when you integrate this guy from negative one to one? Answer, because this is an integral, right? Sorry, because this line here, it's integral, it's a vector. It takes into account negatives and positives, right? Before we were trying to solve the problem of area, and it's a bit finicky that you ended up with negative things, right? But you want negative things. Because this area down here represents, uh, I'm going, well, back home. I'm going to the left. I'm going down. I'm going in the negative direction. This area here, this area here, they cancel out. Which is why total displacement is zero. Okay. Because the, the integral, not the area, the integral is zero. So that's why there's no displacement. Does that make sense? Simple idea. But I just wanted you to get, to get that across to you, because when I learnt this, I just learnt this, you just do this, and it had no connection with, you're actually working out an area, and that area, I promise this will be the last time I do it, that area is exactly what you've been doing since like, what, year eight? When you learnt distance equals speed times time. You're just doing it an infinite number of times, and that's what integration is.